all right we are back with another shoreline video this time we are doing a budget kit setup so here are the keys that i am running with these keys total to about 500k not going in with a full set of keys we are doing a very limited set because this is just supposed to be an affordable kit that you can bring to shoreline as you can see we've got the paca we've got a pistol We've got nothing crazy. We've got some basic headphones, all things that you can buy. And for the quality, I have messed with the image a little bit so it's easier to see. We did a night raid here. Um, I didn't bring NVGs, so this is completely just using my own eyes and the game light, post effects, all that. So we'll skip through this four times speed part here. One thing to note here is that we've spent probably around 300,000 on keys. So as a whole, the kit and the keys, it's probably going to be adding up to about 400k. Just to give you kind of a baseline of what we're going into, what we're invested in this raid. About 150,000 for the kit. And then about 300k for keys, so 400, 450k. All right, so we start heading into the first room, 107. This is a solid room. This is a really good keyed room. It's got a few med bag spawns. I have found a lead X in here before, so it can be very, very profitable. As you can see, I've bought the cheapest possible ammo as well. All we're trying to do is kill a scab or two. Then we can use their gun. We found a morphine already here. Vitamins, decent. Not a great, not a great 107, but not a terrible one either. I've seen worse. I've definitely seen worse. Up to the second floor now. This is a great spawn. 227 is a great room. You can actually find a lead X there. I found a defib there before and a bunch of other things like ophthalmoscope and med tech. This room is hit or miss. It's just a weapon box. Um, it's a great way to maybe get a gun for free. If you're doing a zero to hero this room 219 is great this is a defib lead x graphics card i've seen a lot of stuff here bitcoins a lot of good stuff can spawn here skull rings everything it's a solid room a lot of these rooms that we're going to hit are going to be open which are amazing because that's what makes health resort on shoreline such a great map because you don't have to have a bunch of keys. If you know all the open rooms, you can just go crazy and loot a bunch of good stuff. Like 213 right here, this is an open room. This is a really great room to loot. A lot of potential boxes. Another Ledex spawn. I've, I've actually found one in this bureau. This small little uh, end table, I guess. I have found one there. I believe we go upstairs after this. Now, one room we don't hit is 308 and 306. Those are computer rooms. It's a pretty good room, but it's a mission room, so it's genuinely pretty expensive all the time. So we skip that room for this run. Next room we're going to hit is 310, which is a great room, very underrated. There's a Bitcoin spawn. I've found one here multiple times. There's gold spawns everywhere in this room. There's gold chains. You can get pro kill amulets. You can see I see a horse here. That's the spawn for many valuable items. Vase, uh, figureheads, and there's always, I think there's five total gym bag spawns. So you can get up to five per room. And yeah, scavs can be anywhere now. I've seen them on the third floor of both wings. I feel like they didn't used to come up that far. They usually just sit around the bottom, but you really got to be careful and be attentive where these guys are moving around all the time because it can change at a moment's notice. Forgot the key to 313. It is a good room, but I would not recommend getting the key for this budget run. It's just a force of habit that I kick that door in there. It's a great room if you have the money. There's two gym... There's two medical bag spawns in that uh, connecting room. So they can spawn there, but they didn't this time. Bear buddy, that's always solid. Always check those things in the hallway if you can and there's nobody around with this marked room it is an open marked room actually in the ears of this pig-headed man 
there can be gold spawns. So I've actually seen gold chains spawn in his ears. So always check those out. Just you got to look at them in order to see. But definitely worth an extra second to check them out. See if anything's there. Right here, I'm just packing a mag. Got some ammo. Make sure my, my rifle's fully loaded here. It's a convenient plate carrier too, so if I find any side plates, I could possibly throw them in there as well. Which is big. And this plate carrier will sell for like, maybe 40 or 50k empty, and the plates, uh, the plates go up and down. You can sell the plates sometimes for 40 or 50k by themselves. And always keep a tab on your meds. Just try to have some meds if you didn't go in with any. Did some surgery. Well needed. Having your arms in raid is super, super important because it's literally what you're aiming with and your aim just gets wobbly without an arm. So it's way better to just have both arms if you can. Take a second, surge it up, get back to normal. And I will have you guys know, I actually switched out my Kappa for a Gamma container because it was the smallest one I had, and I think it was a more accurate representation of most of the player base at this time. And, and just in general, I think a lot of people will have a Gamma or close to it rather than have a Kappa. I thought it wouldn't make sense to bring that, so that's why we, we've got the Gamma. This one is San, San Util, this key. And this room connects to 328, which makes it an invaluable key, because this key actually goes to three different doors. And as you can see, I'm getting kind of really good loot here. Tetris, a figurehead, we've got, we've got a gold chain out of it as well. There's really good loot in this room. I've, I've never been disappointed opening up these, these rooms down here. Another gold chain, hemostats are selling for a lot of gold right now lot of ruble. Just taking a once over this room again. I think sanatorium utility is also like pretty cheap too. So right here I think I move all the keys down. Yeah, everything that we've used. We've used all these. We haven't used the safe keys yet, or any of those. So we're almost full on loot, and we still have keys to go. And if I truly wanted to minimize uh, my effort and maximize my output, I would have grabbed that rig that I dropped earlier in the marked room for storage, but it's, it's kind of fine. It would really only give me a few slots. Always search this open stuff. When you're running without keys, you want to search, you kind of just want to search everything. And you could get really lucky. I mean, like right here, I find a site I could throw the, on the AK if I wanted. I think it was a zoom site though, so I didn't want to put it on there. But forgot the key to 306, forgot I don't have that. That's also a solid room if you can't afford it. It's usually pricier because it's a mission room. Now, I did bring 316 East, which I actually don't recommend buying. I've never really gotten anything crazy in this room. There's always a few weapon cases, maybe a gun. But, as you can see, we do get the SE5 here, so that's, that's not bad. But, I've never really found anything insane. Maybe beginning of wipe this, this room might be good, because... You know, the potential ammo spawns and the weapon parts are invaluable in the beginning. But a lot of this stuff is random. It doesn't really pay off. Some PP ammo, I guess, could be good if I sold it. Maybe around, maybe around 1100 per round. But I would say steer clear from that key. It's just there's not much value in it. The potential value is a lot lower than what the key actually costs. So... This is another great open room. This is the dead scav room on the end of east, near the smaller number rooms, 301, 302. I believe this is 301. And like I said, these are all online raids, which is why I'm kind of playing slower and not really just zooming through everything.
if I did go offline, the, the thing is, it would help me make the video, but the issue with going offline is that the loot isn't the same, right? So if you go into like, I guess it's called practice mode. Yeah, it's practice mode. If you go into practice mode, you're going to find a lot of loot, like, like a lot. Things that don't normally spawn in raid, and that's because it's all like jumped up. There's like a, a jump in the percentage spawn chance of everything, so it, it's kind of hard to just do that and and be okay with it. So I just run real raids. That way, you guys can actually see what kinds of things I'm finding in an actual raid. So like all this stuff I'm able to take out, all this stuff I'm able to sell in the flea. In practice mode, you can loot all you want, you can't take any of it out. And it's also wrong. I mean, it'll give you a decent idea of where stuff is, but... There's things that almost never spawn in certain locations that will be there almost every raid in offline and practice mode. So, it's very different. And I'm sure maybe PvE Tarkov is different as well. I haven't really played it too much. But... Moving on, we're in admin now. That's a red key card spawn on that table. Always just check that. This shelf is always pretty good. Find beard oil or something like that on there. Fire steel, things like that. The safe, I would highly recommend buying. I've found bitcoins, intel in here so many times, countless times. We've got a book, which isn't which is not great. I'm not going to lie. It's not that great. But anything we can fit into sick case, we will. And I would recommend bringing a documents case too, if you do have one and you can spare it for the run. You can pick up so many files, like that manual, I'm pretty sure you can just throw right in your document case. Anything that's paper, so a small diary, uh, the large diaries too, anything that you can write on or you would be able to write on, you could throw in there and you can save a ton of space two less slots that you have to use on your rig for something you can throw right into your documents case and you know it's just taking up space somewhere else these filing cabinets are very underrated these are very underrated that's a fake key so that's not going to be worth anything i just wanted to click it and make sure but yeah that, that key is fake it might sell for four or five k rubles Right here, I just realized that I have a suppressor I could throw in the AK, so I did that. Two of five is just a theater room. Two of four is pretty good. Now, these rooms aren't numbered, so I'm just kind of numbering them so that you guys can know a reference because they're not numbered on the outside. I think a couple of them are. But I just counted them up from uh, starting from the east side, going to the west side. But you always want to check these computers. You could get a GPU. Late wipe, they're, they're not too expensive. Around 160, 170k, but nothing too crazy. That's a power supply. Power supplies do tend to be selling for quite a bit in the beginning. But right now, they're almost worthless. It's not really worth to take out of the raid. Chlorine, something I'm going to drop. Another habit you guys can get into when you first start a wipe is picking up everything possible. The more loot you pick up, the higher your perception will be. And that just helps you with looting. I know it doesn't give you the hearing anymore, which is, which used to be the big thing. It used to be something to grind for, but you can still level up perception and attention from looting and picking up loot instantly dropping it you know so try to do that as much as you can so keep leveling that stuff up and then there's four more filing cabinets in this room with the the eight that we searched earlier so always go to check these four in the back i found intel in here multiple times you can find tetras in filing cabinets as well save up tetrises and buy a bitcoin i'm just packing a mag as we go Pox Ram is really not worth taking. I know some of you might be might be taking that out in your raids, but it's when you think about it, it's about 10k, 11k. If your loot value isn't averaging around 20,000 per slot, 
you really got to think and rethink about what you're looting here because 20k is pretty doable. I mean, you've got the power bank, which is 50k, the Kravich sewing kit, which is 23. You've got things like bolts and nuts, which are really high up there. If you can't manage to get about 20 to 25k per slot, um, you have to rethink your looting strategy because there's a lot of loot to be taken. 20 to 25k should be very doable. I'm I usually try to average around 30k and above. Like right here, I mean, bear buddy, I think that's like 15 per slot. I think it's like 50 or 60k. I'm gonna go through West Connector here. On the first floor. I don't believe we searched the basement, but the basement's a great place to start if you don't have any keys. You can get a lot of loot from Health Resort from just hitting gym bags. Sure, you gotta loot a lot of them, but you don't need any keys. I actually miss a bublex here, but it's fine. It's, uh... I think we end up getting full full backpack anyway, so... Nothing, nothing too crazy here. Lupo's beans, again, that's 30k per slot, so if you're struggling to find those items, this video will definitely help you, because this is what I try to average all the time is around 30k. And I think it's very doable when you when you see some of the items, like the USAC dolls, some of them are 60k, you know, 30k per slot. You always want to be thinking about what's going to give you the most money per slot. And sometimes the big things like Bear Buddy aren't worth taking. If you can find two or three items worth 30k, you're wasting your time with the Bear Buddy. You might as well drop it. Or the vase. The vase really isn't that expensive either. You know, for example, you find you find uh, four more Kravitches, like sewing kits. I'm going to drop the vase or the bear buddy for that. Or right here, the condensed milk. Right now, condensed milk is really expensive. You know, it's normally 15k to locals, but people have started the trooper bag barter. So that, that has gone way up. It's gone way, way up. People are paying 30 to 40k for those condensed milks now. Milk as well has gone up. Everything late wipe has changed because more traders are unlocked, more barters are unlocked. People care about new things. So, bronze lion. This is a this is a weird item. I probably should have dropped the bear buddy or the vase here. I think I might. I'm not sure. Looks like I just rearrange my inventory and take it. But we kind of did get scammed in 301. It looks like. I found bitcoins, GPUs, defibrillators, LEDXs, everything. Injectors really aren't crazy. I'm kind of hopelessly trying to put some stuff away. I think taking re-upping the heels is a good idea because they'll sell for more. Really just trying to figure out how I can pick this lion up. I think I did decently well here. Probably dropped the bandage. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's it's very it's always a little bit risky dropping heals in a game like this because you always want to have the ability to stop a bleed without burning through. And I actually find a GPU. Just drop a CMS real quick, GPU. Actually just trade that out for the Tetris as well, just to be safe. So, as I was saying, you never really want to drop all of your heals because you never know what's going to happen, right? You just want to be able to be prepared for anything. So another great room, 311. This is an open room. There's two rare spawns for loot. As you can see, there's a Boblex right there. Which is huge. I think I definitely dropped the book here. Yeah. And I do and I actually do want the book, it looks like. So I might drop the morphine. Morphine sells for quite a bit. Honestly, I probably should have dropped the vase here. The vase of the bear buddy. And then took a couple CMS kits in their place, because they're selling for about 40k, 50k. But I mean, whatever I do here is fine. I think, yeah, if I just drop that, that's all good.
you're just going for an average at the end of the day so not everything has to be perfect but it is good to minimize and maximize where you can you've only got so many slots so it's, it's very important but this is a good room to check as well two medical bags one spawns in the porch one spawns in that chair we passed 210 is another open room that I've gotten very useful stuff out of. I've ran zero to heroes on this map and have found rigs, armored rigs in here. As you can see, a helmet, gun, you know, this is a great starter. If you spawn on the west side of the map and you get this, you get to this place first, it's a great spot to hit. It's a great spot to hit. I did forget to open one of the safes, but we're so full on loot that it really doesn't matter. It probably wouldn't have mattered. Unless we've got like a Bitcoin or something like that. So in this case, it doesn't matter too much. And again, we are skipping the basement floor. Which is, I mean, purely because we don't have room. I mean, there's only so much you can do to make it worth your time. You could loot the entirety of Shoreline and take almost the entire raid, sure. But at some point, you start earning less. So even though you're trading out some of your worst items for better items, sometimes you're only trading them out for another five or six grand. And if you spend 10 minutes doing that, you only make another 100,000. It's probably not worth doing. It's probably worth just resetting and getting into a new raid, getting some new chances at the places you've already hit. So speed and efficiency is, is very big when looting this place because it's huge. It's monotonous. Anything can happen. Anyone can pull up. Player scavs, players. It's very important to just do what you know and do nothing more, nothing less. Zoomed right through that extract. The path to lighthouse is a great extract. It used to get camped a lot, but I haven't been camped there in a while. Obviously, if you wanted and you had the money, you could do the Red Rebel extract, which is directly north of Sanatorium. You could just take the Red Rebel ice pick. An armored rig or no body armor and paracord get out that way it is completely free if you have those items and none of it is used up so you can use the paracord multiple times infinite uses on that so as you can see we did very very well on loot this is this is a lot we've got a lot here and selling this is going to be amazing this probably will be I mean, obviously, obviously, I know what it'll be, but I think it was around, man, maybe two mil. I think it was almost two million, something like that. And we'll see it in a minute here. We'll skip ahead, actually. Skip ahead this part. Just wanted to make sure that I take off everything that I picked up in raid, all the AKs, you know, all the gear. I mean, obviously, we got the GPU, the defib. And there should be a couple things. I think I got rubles in my sick case. Maybe some spare injectors in the in the injectors case as well. Obviously, we've got the AP ammo, which was a good find for for a new player, for any player really. We've got the morphine in there. It's 40k. And I'm setting myself up here for another run through. You know, all I have to do is buy another packa, and I can do this again. I've got the same backpack, I've got everything I need. Now one thing you will have to do if you're not leveled up as much as me, or have the same hideout as me, you will have to eat during this raid in game. You will most likely be out of food at some point, so it's important to just pay attention to that. We did end up finding peas in the raid, so if we needed to, we could. But obviously our metabolism is so high, we, I think we drank and ate one time and then we were good for the rest of the raid so right here we can see i'm about to get 674,000 rubles kind of showing you there's no other money in sight and just showing you where it's coming from we've got 674,000 right there and then we start listing stuff we just start start listing a ton of items And with this, with listing items, there's another theory behind this as well. Save weapons and gun parts till the very end because they are, tend to sell a lot slower. So always sell those, the high demand items first, like like the P's, the graphics card, 
things like that. People are, people are always buying food. They're always buying stuff for their hideout. So things like this will tend to go faster. So again, weapon parts, I shouldn't be selling that barrel, but it is a pretty high commodity barrel. So I figured it was all right to sell. SE5 is huge. I mean, per slot, that's insane. That's 65k, 68k. Easily, that's going to sell instantly, you know. It's just reinforcing that point of the average per slot items. Very easy to get up there. I got really lucky with this milk. I was able to sell it for quite a bit. 77,000 because someone's doing the, doing the scam, unfortunately. But fortunate for me, because I can sell it for a higher price temporarily. Hemostats, again, these are worth a lot. I mean, you've got 36,000, so 35,000 for a new one is pretty good. The gold chains sometimes are worth selling on the flea, sometimes they're not. If they're above like 27,000, I think they're worth it, but depends on how much is going to get taken out for listing it and stuff like that, so... Right here, we're doing something very important. We're taking the plates out before we sell it because everybody takes the plates out. You just want to lowball that, and then you can sell the plates by themselves for another 58k. So you're making an armor that would have netted you 80,000 turn into 180,000 very quickly. So there's a lot of things to min max your way up. Another great item is that power bank. You know, 43k is, is pretty good. I kind of lost out on that cord a little bit, but all good. This mag, I'm pretty sure... Oh, no, I can't sell. This is the one one of the mags that doesn't sell on the flea, so... Just a keep mag, but... Suppressor definitely will. Didn't have to use the slot on that suppressor or the mag. So even keeping it, it's worth it. 33k for an AK is fire, because technically it's one slot. I didn't have to waste any of my backpack carrying it. Same thing with the SMG we just sold. P is this comp M4. I'm pretty sure we just sell that local. And the important thing is to always kind of keep tabs on what prices are. So like, next time I'm not going to pick up that comp 4. At one point, I think it was worth it. But that might have been early, early in the wipe. I might have remembered it wrong so it's always good to just keep up on stuff like that I believe we do we do kind of skip ahead here in the end because there was a lot of stuff to sell there's quite a few things to sell all right so we made about 1.5 mil we've still got stuff waiting to sell which is huge so, I mean, right there you can see we've got defib units waiting to sell. We've got a lot of things that are just in queue. So, there's money there. And I think I ended up selling everything here. I mean, I know I did. So, this was closer to 2 million. But, in terms of the investment that we had, relatively zero. I mean, we went in with maybe a 150k kit as a whole, 150k around that the backpack was was more expensive than anything but the backpack is what you really want the mechanism bag is very good because it's light has a lot of slots it's less than a kilo so it's pretty nice pretty nice but yeah i hope this helps guys um this is a video i've been wanting to make for a while i think i might do a no key shoreline raid as well just to kind of show you where i would go if i didn't have any keys you know where where would you prioritize the loot Instead of hitting a few keyed rooms, you'd hit no keyed rooms. And we'll see how we can make money on that map as well. How we can make money with runs like that. But yeah, guys, there's more videos to come. Appreciate you guys watching as always. And uh, yeah, that's it. See you guys later.